The preliminary report for the accident with Air India Flight 171 at Ahmedabad in India on the 12th of June 2025 is released. It appears to be a very tragic mistake. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Mungna Nordal and I am a retired airline captain and instructor. Today is Saturday, 12th of July, and the preliminary report has just been released. As with many aviation accidents, there are often unexpected factors or circumstances that no one could have anticipated, and this case appears to be no exception. But before we explore possible causes, Let's start by reviewing the known facts. Air India Flight 171 was operated by a Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner. Registration Victor Tango, Alpha November Bravo. It was manufactured in 2013. At the time of the accident, the aircraft was reported to be airworthy, with all required maintenance procedures completed. Although there were a few minor discrepancies listed in a minimum equipment list, MEL. None had any impact on the operation of the accident flight. The aircraft's weight and balance were within the prescribed limits. On board were 242 individuals, including 12 crew members and 230 passengers. Tragically, only one passenger survived. The aircraft impacted multiple buildings during the crash resulting in 19 fatalities and 67 injuries on the ground. The flight crew consisted of two pilots. The captain, aged 56, had accumulated 15,638 total flight hours, including 8,596 hours on the Boeing 787. He was pilot monitoring. The first officer, aged 32, had 3,403 total flight hours, with 1,128 hours on type. He was pilot flying. Both pilots were considered experienced for the operation of this aircraft. At the time of the accident, weather conditions were hazy with light winds, but these were not considered a contributing factor. The aircraft was equipped with two enhanced airborne flight recorders, EAFRs, which combined digital flight data and cockpit voice recordings. These were installed in two separate locations, one in the tail section and one in the forward section of the aircraft. The tail mounted recorder was severely damaged, but the forward unit remains largely intact and critical data was successfully recovered. Information retrieved from the enhanced airborne flight recorder reveals the following sequence of events. 080733 UTC. The aircraft was cleared for takeoff on runway 23 with reported winds from 240 degrees at 6 knots. Flaps were set to 5 degrees, a configuration that remained unchanged for the duration of the flight. 080737 UTC. The aircraft began its takeoff roll. 080839 UTC. The aircraft became airborne. 080842 UTC. The indicated airspeed reached 180 knots. Immediately following this, both engine 1 and engine 2 fuel control switches transitioned from run to cutoff, one after the other, with a recorded time gap of 01 second. It is unclear whether this denotes 1 second or 0 0.1 second due to a possible missing punctuation mark. This point requires clarification. With both fuel control switches in the cutoff position, the fuel supply to both engines was terminated, causing the engines, then operating at high RPM, to begin spooling down. In the cockpit voice recording, one of the pilots is heard asking the other why did he cut off. The other pilot responded that he did not do so. CCTV footage from the airport captured the deployment of the Ram Air Turbine, RAT, during the initial climb shortly after takeoff. The RAT is automatically deployed when electrical and or hydraulic power is lost. Once deployed, it provides sufficient power for flight controls and essential systems. 
080847 UTC. The red began supplying hydraulic power to the aircraft. 080852 UTC. The engine one fuel control switch transitioned back from cutoff to run, restoring fuel flow. Engine one began spilling up as a result. 080854 UTC. The auxiliary power unit, APU, air inlet door began to open, consistent with the automatic start logic. The APU, typically used while the aircraft is on the ground, provides electrical power and compressed air for engine start and air conditioning. In this case, the APU began its startup sequence automatically in response to the in-flight dual engine shutdown. 080852 UTC. The engine 2 fuel control switch also transitioned from cutoff to run. However, there was insufficient time for the engine to restart before impact. 080905 UTC. A mayday call was transmitted by the flight crew. 080911 UTC. The EAFR stopped recording. The total duration of the flight from takeoff to data loss was approximately 32 seconds. The aircraft struck a total of six buildings, designated A through F in the investigation report. The initial impact occurred with the aircraft at an altitude of 8 degrees nose-up and wings level, indicating that the aircraft was not stalled and remained under pilot control at the time. Had the aircraft not collided with these structures, additional survivors might have been possible. After striking building A, the aircraft continued forward, disintegrating as it collided with the subsequent buildings. During this sequence, the fuel tanks ruptured, and the released fuel was ignited by hot engine components, resulting in a severe post-impact fire that consumed most of the airframe. The preliminary report confirmed the following findings. The APU air inlet door was found in the open position consistent with the automatic APU start sequence that will be triggered by a dual engine shutdown. The flap handle assembly was recovered with the flap lever set to the flaps 5 position, which aligns with the normal takeoff configuration. The landing gear would not have retracted due to the loss of main hydraulic power. The thrust lever quadrant sustained significant thermal damage, both thrust levers were found near the aft position. However, the EAFR data revealed that the thrust levers remained forward until the impact. Both fuel control switches were found in the run position. The report states both fuel control switches were moved to cutoff position in quick succession, and then they were moved to the run position. They are moved when you start engines and when you shut down the engines after parking the aircraft. Apart from that, they are only used to shut down an engine in case of engine damage or fire. To move this switch to another position, you must pinch this switch with your fingers and lift it up. Therefore, it should not be possible to move those switches by accident. However, in the preliminary report it is written, quote, the FAA issued Special Air Roughness Information Bulletin, SAIB, number NM-18-33, on December 17, 2018, regarding the potential disengagement of the fuel control switch locking feature. This SAIB was issued based on reports from operators of Model 737 airplanes that the fuel control switches were installed with the locking feature disengaged. The air roughness concern was not considered an unsafe condition that would warrant air roughness directive, AD, by the FAA. The fuel control switch design, including the locking feature, is similar on various Boeing airplane models, including part number 40L837-3D which is fitted in Boeing 787 aircraft Victor Tango Alpha November Bravo. As per information for Air India, the suggested inspections were not carried out as the SAIB was advisory and not mandatory. 
end quote. If you are a pilot flying a Boeing equipped with this type of fuel control switch, I like to ask the following question. If the fuel control switches are not fully locked, is there a possibility they could be moved without being intentionally lifted, perhaps due to vibrations, key forces, or accidental contact by a pilot? In some aircraft types, it is common practice for the pilot monitoring to keep a hand behind the thrust levers during takeoff to prevent uncommanded movement. While this is not required in modern aircraft such as the Boeing 787, it's conceivable that a pilot, out of habit from flying a different aircraft type, may have continued this practice. If so, could an inadvertent movement of the hand during takeoff have unintentionally pushed against the fuel control switches? To me, this appears to be a deeply tragic event, one that perhaps could have been prevented. I sincerely hope that final investigation will uncover the exact cause and help prevent similar occurrences in the future. And that is all for this time. Thank you for watching.